I'm Kim and today we are going to put our green stalk together. This green stalk will be for our indoor garden. It'll go inside my indoor grow tent and we will move in some of the vegetables that we started a week ago as well as some carrots and some other things. So let's get started in the process of assembling a green stalk. If you don't know what a green stalk is, please check out my video, All Things Green Stalk, and it'll show you what you can grow in this vertical growth system. The first thing that we need to do is prepare our soil. For the green stalk, you want to use a high quality potting mix. You do not want regular garden soil. You don't want just straight up like field dirt or anything like that. It needs to be a high quality potting mix. So you can make your own or you can buy um, a reputable brand. There are many different ones out there. I don't have a favorite. It's whichever one's on sale because I'm gonna doctor mine up just a little bit. I have some Stay Green um, potting mix in this container here. I also had a small bag of miracle Grow uh, moisture control potting mix. So I mix those two together. And of course, there's not enough nutrition, nutrients in those because they've been sitting outside at the local hardware store since the summer. I've added to that some peat moss to help with moisture as well as providing some nutrients. So this is peat moss. I'll be glad when the season's back in and I can get a, a big bag of this. And then to help, because you wanna make sure that your soil is nice and loose. You don't want a thick, heavy soil where your plants can't, uh, the roots of your plants can't go down and get to the nutrition, the nutrients. So I'm adding some perlite as well to this mixture. So I've already put it in my container here. I've kind of mixed it all up together, trying to make sure that I have um, a good mixture of those two different potting mixes, as well as some of the nutrients here. I'll also be adding some mycos to the mix. I'll bring you in closer when we get close to that step, but it helps with inoculating the roots for better root development. So we'll talk about that here shortly. The first thing that we're going to do is I am going to actually use one of the original um, planters and some of the leaf um, tiers. So I'm going to mix some of my tiers up together. I will be putting uh, bok choy, I believe, in, in the larger tier. I have to go look at my plan. And then we'll be putting lettuce and carrots in some of the leaf tiers. But the first thing we need to do is put some of the soil in this container. There is actually a line inside the container that says fill to the top. So my soil is already damp. Since I'm indoors, I thought that was a critical piece. If I was outdoors, it wouldn't matter. I would fill it up with soil and then I would put water over it to, to make sure the soil was nice and damp to start with. But I'm inside my grow tent. I don't have a lot of drainage options. So I made sure that the soil is already nice and moist inside this tote here before I'm even gonna fill up the container. So let's get started filling up the first tier. I'm ready to move to the next step. So let's talk a little bit about what I did. I filled it all the way up to the top because this is filled to the top, which I did all the way around. If this soil was not moist and I put water on it, it would have just sunk it down. It would have been like half full. But since this is already very damp and moist, I know that I'm truly at my fill line. One of the things I didn't talk about and I wanted you to be able to see is that there are drainage holes on each layer of the green stalk. So we know there's gonna be good drainage at the bottom. So now that you have this layer done, you would add the next step, which is one of these trays. So this tray sits right on top and it has little drainage holes on the sides as well. And that drainage hole need to be right in the center of each of the pockets. So if I line that hole up right in the center of the pocket, 
that tier is done. The way that the system works is that each layer has one of the gray trays and then it has one of the tiers and you're going to repeat that all the way down. So as water's filling up this little gray tray, it'll eventually get to this little spout here and that's the overflow spout. It'll overflow in a circular motion down to the next level, which will hit the tray at the next level. And that process will happen time and time and time again, all the way through the system to the bottom. Once that bottom tray overflows, then it'll come out the bottom and you know that the water has made it all the way through the system. But if you just wait a few minutes, the water that the tray is providing to each one of the pockets will eventually go all the way through and come out the bottom in these holes as well. So not only is that layer getting water from the tray, but it's also getting water from each of the draining holes from the layer up above. So there are no watering issues with this system at all. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been using it for two years. This is my third year and watering has never been a problem for me. I'm going to go ahead and complete the same step for as much dirt as um, as much soil as I have. So I believe I'll be able to do two more layers, uh, two more tiers, and then we'll move to the next step. So I will just fast forward it. And the next time you see me, I will have three of these tiers complete. I'll be back. Okay, I have three of the tiers filled and Gizmo keeps photo bombing my screens here, but this is Gizmo. Gizmo, say hello. Say hello to our friends. Anyway, so I have three of the tiers complete. The bottom tier has a gray um, tray on top of it. And then the next tier has a gray tray, the top tier for now, because I'm only doing three tiers, when I decide to put an extra tier on or two, then I'll keep going up. But the very top tier doesn't get a gray tray, it gets this thing here, which is similar to the gray tier, but since the top one will not have all of the benefits of the holes from a tier above it, this is what you would use on the top. And this has a hole in the center which the water will go through this hole down to the next levels. And it also has itty bitty little holes that'll line up with each of the pockets of that particular tier. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in place. The other thing that um, I wanted to say is that it has these little places right here where it's gonna hook on to that top tier. So I'll line it all up and we'll get going. And there it is, that's the top tier ready to go. I am actually gonna pause the video and I'm gonna bring you back up close as I assemble the green stalk. Had to do some things before I took it to the next step. One was put this hair up. Oh, I can't stand for my hair to touch me. But um, going on to the next step. So the next step, we're gonna re get ready to assemble. I have a spinner that I like to put my green stalks on you can get these ultimate spinners right from the green stock website and since i'm indoors i don't have anywhere for this water to escape if i overwater the green stalk so i make sure that i include this holes here and when i water i stop the holes up until i'm ready to release the water into another container so you have to kind of play it by ear on your watering for your indoor green stalk outside perfect so making sure that I have that set up where I want it just to protect my tent I still put this inside a tray just in case there's spillage and I don't want too much spillage on the floor of the tent so the first one we'll set it up it sits right into the spinner see that 
spins perfectly. So that's the first layer. We're going to go ahead and add the second layer. Now before I put this in place, if I already had starts, you know, like tomato plants or pepper plants or small cucumber plants or squash or whatever those starts might be that I'm not starting from seeds, some people say it's better to put them in before you assemble. But I don't have any of those long, leafy, you know, four, five, six inch starts or plants. So I'm going to be doing mine this way. So now you line it up and you want to make sure that you line it up so that it sits properly. The good thing is I have a spinner to spin it right around. You see that? It fell right in place. So if you notice, the pockets are just opposite each other. This one sits in between these two. So when this one, the hole underneath waters, it's watering straight down into this pocket where the holes are all the way around. So that's two in. Let's go get the third one. there's another one in place so I have a total right now a total right now so I have three layers six on each layer I have 18 spots that I can grow 18 different vegetables right now if I don't do anything else but I will be adding additional layers at least two more before I'm finished in this space but for now, this is more than what I need. I'm going to be putting um, carrots. And these are my carrots. Carrots, you pretty much always start from seeds. So I'm going to put carrots in one of these. And then, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put carrots in every other one. And I'll put it in both. So I will have six pockets of carrots. And then, remember that lettuce I started on week one? The salad bowl and the red salad bowl and the black seeded Simpson and the dark rodent. So I am one week in. These have broken ground and I am going to add those in between the carrots. So you, we will have a carrot and lettuce tower at this point. The bottom tier, I'm not putting anything in it for now because I will be putting some bok choy in that bottom tower. But since it's a 10 inch deep tier, I wanted it on bottom. I'm not ready to fill it, but I wanted it on bottom. I'll be filling that in the next couple of weeks. But the lettuce and the carrots will go in these next two tiers. Let me show you how I'm going to do that process. But first, I got to get me a chair. I'm too old for all of this standing. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Had a little technical difficulties, but I'm back now. So we are going to do the lettuce. So let's start with the black seeded Simpson. So I will need to make some tags for the black seeded Simpson. We're going to start with the black seeded Simpson. For each one of my plugs, I'm going to add some mycos. Mycos, like I said, is a mycorrhizal inoculation. So it helps the roots establish and it will give you a stronger foundation for a stronger plant. So we're going to add just a little bit of this in there. The first thing we're going to do is just make a little pocket and add just a teeny little bit of micros in there. It doesn't take much at all, just a couple granules. I'm popping out one of my plugs. And I want to show this plug to you here. Let me get another one out put this down so we can talk about that plug so I want to show you the plug 
since I don't pack my plugs so tightly into the soil, I want you to see how those roots are nice and wrapped around the soil. Honestly, the soil is a little bit too wet, but we're gonna make it work. And then I'm gonna just sit this right in here. Actually, that plug's so he healthy, I'm gonna split it into two pieces. Let's do the next one. I'm gonna to have to come back and add just a little more potting soil. So that one seemed to be a little, a little light on soil, but we'll come back and do that right at the end. So adding a little more of the mycos. Plop this right in here. Let's plop the third one in. Very nice root structure. Oh, forgot my Michaels. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the second layer. Black Seeded Simpson. We'll go ahead and do some backfilling. This is the one that really needed the dirt. That other one wasn't so bad. Some people like to use little bitty like solo cups to backfill when they have to add dirt. That's probably the best thing to do, but I don't have any available right now, so this works too. When you buy your potting soil, if you don't get good quality potting soil, a lot of times you'll get little pieces of mulch and things like that in there. That's not gonna break down anytime in the next year. So you have to kind of pick through those. Potting soil is not what it used to be. That's why I pretty much mix up my own if I can't get a good quality one. And there are some good ones out there though. Let me, I wanna be clear, there are some good ones but they're just hard to find this time of year where I live. I'm making a mess. But that's okay, the floor of the tent can be swept to clean up any mess that I might make. All right, if I can have one more, I'm gonna to need to backfill this next layer. Until you put it together, you might not realize that you don't have enough dirt. You wanna make sure that dirt comes all the way up. All right, so I need to add to the second layer two more types of lettuce. So I am going to add one of the red salad bowls and I'm gonna do one of the dark uh, rodents. And then that way it'll give me a variety. If you follow me, um, when, I would put, when I was putting the seeds in the seed trays, I was super heavy handed. And so some of these had way too many seeds in them and I needed to split them. But the red salad bowl is looking pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have that issue with the red salad bowl. Let me pop that out. All right. Get that set up in here. Label, 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 label. So there's my label for the red salad bowl. Here's my label for the black seeded Simpson. And now I'm going to put in the uh, dark rodent in this cell here.
All right, there's the black rodent. All of my lettuce that I'm going to use for now is in. The rest of this, I'm going to keep letting it grow. If it gets larger, then I'll just up pot it to another cell so that it'll be ready for me in the future. Now I'm going to work on the carrots. For the carrots in the green stalk, you can plant up to three carrots in each pocket, but I'll be honest with you, I might end up with four, five, or six, but they still come out for me. Carrot seeds are tiny. They are very tiny, and I think they usually take um, about 14 days. Let me double check to germinate. One to three weeks. One to three weeks, and then it'll germinate, so... I already know I'm not going to get three seeds in a, in a pocket. Some people will just put the seeds in the pocket and then come back and thin them out later. That's one option. Or you can start picking them while they're young as another way to thin the seeds out over time. And then the last pocket. All right, so this particular, these carrots are called I'm not even going to try. There it is. All right, so let me go get labels for these carrots and then I'm going to go grab a different kind of carrot to put in this next layer. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. The second seed that we're going to sow are called Danvers. I really like Danvers. They have nice, straight uh, carrots when they come out, and they're super sweet. The thing that I like most about this particular seed, this is from Fairy Morse. I, I believe I picked these up at Rural King, um, but Fairy Morse, you can pick them up, I think, at most local big box hardware stores, your Lowe's, your Home Depot's, that kind of stuff. But I believe I picked these up at Rural King. But what I like about this particular brand is called So Easy. So there is a clay coating around each of the seeds so you can actually see what you're doing. There's a red clay coating. I don't know if you can see that or not. But now I can see how many seeds I'm actually sowing. So let's see what we're going to do here. One, two, three, four. Five. Five looks good to me. Now, I know I haven't covered any of these up yet, so we will come back and cover everything up. Now, Greenstalk says that you can put three carrots to a cell, and you can put carrots in the original or the leaf planters. The original is a 10-inch pocket. The leaf planter is a 7-inch pocket. So let's see what it says, how we cover these up. These need to be covered up a quarter of an inch to a half inch deep. So I think what I'm going to do is put my gloves back on here real quick. And I'm just going to poke it down a quarter of an inch. My helper's making me some labels right now. Tina is a big help to me. I'm actually not feeling so well today, and she did some errands for me. She's helping take care of me. So we can continue to make this content for everyone. All right, so we have all three pockets for the Danvers covered. Let me grab my Danver labels. And then I'm doing my um, whatever that other name was. Yeah, the. let me mess it up real quick. The Dulcine, 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 maybe, carrots. So, unfortunately, since they don't have a red clay coating, I can't see these carrots. They are lost forever, but they're in here. So, let's give them a good toss. Let's put a tag on. Give them another good toss here. Hopefully, I'm not putting them on top of each other. Give it a nice tag. And then the last one here, nice toss and a tag. Voila. Oh, I still need my Danver tags. 
So while I'm waiting on the Danver tags, because they are coming, I um, want to talk a little bit about watering. So you don't want to water until the, the cell, the top may be dry, but it may still be damp down inside the system a ways or inside the pocket. So I usually just put my finger in and if I can put my finger in and I can still feel dampness, I don't water. If I can put my finger in and it's dry, then I'm ready to water. So that's how I think about watering. And you got to remember when you're watering, you're watering the whole tower. One of the other things that I didn't tell you about this tower is that the bottom, the, the leaf, or excuse me, the original planter, this um, tier takes about eight gallons of soil, about eight gallons. The leaf planter, which is only seven inches deep, takes about six gallons of soil. So kind of give you an idea of how much soil you'll need. The top is ready to go, but one of the things uh, you wanna make sure is that you don't get excess dirt and debris in the top, because it's a system, it all works together. So I'm gonna grab a towel and clean this out a little bit because I did get some soil up there. Because if the holes are stopped up, then that means every cell's not getting water. It will not water, water evenly if something's clogged. All right. That's one of the things you really have to watch out for outside as well with leaves and trash and debris and that kind of stuff. So you wanna make sure it stays nice and clean so that it functions the way it's supposed to. So there you have it. Carrots and lettuce ready to go. I want to show you what this could look like once it's in full bloom. So here's a picture from my 2022 garden of a green stock that's full of carrots and lettuce and tomatoes and all kinds of other yummy goodness. I mean, it's, it's a salad in one spot. Everything you need is right here. So here's a couple pictures to send you on your way. Thank you for joining me in setting up this green stalk. We have much, much more to do. If you're interested in one of these, follow my link. You'll get $10 off of your order and you can start your vertical garden. Thank you very much. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Have a wonderful, safe day. Enjoy growing. Bye-bye.